time to strap in and get ready. The leaders in AFL Supercoach are incoming. Helping you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight AFL Show with your hosts, Big Horse, Skitty, and Hurry. G'day and welcome to the Insight AFL Show. I am your host, the Big Horse, and joining me tonight is the two brothers from two separate mothers, but as close as you'll get, Skitty and Herbie. Herbie, how are you, brother? I'm good, boys. I'm good. Feeling refreshed after that uh, that proper round one. Yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't round zero. A bit of a balls up. And Skitty, we, we yes, get to sir. introduce Skitty's squeeze of the week this week. Yeah, boy. So last week, uh, unfortunately, no winners. As um, Caleb Sarong comes over the top, we had about 30 five or so um people that entered and yes yeah, Sarong came over the top unlucky to uh it was skits and mm. secho who both had jesse hogan Setch was the closest to the pin at 171 and then Sarong comes in and scores a 170 and absolutely uh absolutely destroys secho's dream of getting the prize back yeah. so unfortunate but we are now taking entrance for uh this week's squeeze of the week so all you got to do is tell us who's going to be the highest scorer in the uh, personal for the super coach this week and tell us what score they're going to get. Basically, if you guess the right player and you are the closest to the pin of what they actually score, you win yourself a prize pack courtesy of the standard squeeze. Yeah, good. We might even throw in a little bit extra this week, given that it's jackpotted two weeks oh, yeah. in a row. Yeah. Why not? So let's let's see. I'll um we'll throw in something extra if someone gets bingo, the right player mm-hmm. and the right score. Uh, who are you going to go with, Skitty? Early crow, mate. Oh, mate, I've already done a bit of research on who I think is going to be captain, which I've uh, got for us later on tonight, who are the players that I think will be captain. But Ooh. I'm actually going Mr. 7-Eleven himself, mine and Herbie's man, LDU, baby. 155 Nine. last time against the Dockers. Um, so I'm going LDU 161, and that's how I'm kicking it off for us tonight, boys. Herbie? I think these two just pencil it in for me. Um, I'm quickly checking if GWS have a buy because I can't remember. <laughs> but, uh, he's playing, so, Tom, yeah, they're playing West Coast. Uh, they, yeah, they do. So uh, he might be <laughs> subbed off at half time, just uh, resting players. But for me, it's Dacos. Uh, as, actually, oh. yeah, Dacos uh, Vice, don't I? Uh, and then Green is captain. I think Dacos is going to have a blinder. And I think mm-hmm. the Pies are going to make a statement. They're not going to go 0 and 3. So pretty simple for me. How about you, Big Horse? Yeah, I'm going to go Tom Green, and we'll go 160. Oh. I oh, think well, Kieran Briggs will bounce back this week. Um, his ruck work down to Tommy Green will be good. His clearance work is really nice. So, yeah, we'll go Mr. Green yeah. from GWS. Not the little green, the bigger number 12 green. Can, can yeah. I just say, I just want to apologise. I think that's my AD, ADHD. I thought we were talking about captains <laughs> and vice captains. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, the the top scorer, Nick Day cost one sixty seven. Oh damn, I like it. All right, oh, good. so for those of you, Nick or Josh, <laughs> I was like, well, it's not Josh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you haven't yet, please hit like and subscribe, and the bell be a triple banger, please. And also jump in our Discord. Insight Unlimited is live, and for less than fifty cents a week, and as us boys know, a zinger box upsized with an extra burger on the side, you'll get access to everything we do, our insights, our trades, our captains, premium Q&A content, every round of Supercoach and a few other cool perks. Entry to our Discord, though, will always be free if you wanted to get involved in the community and talk Supercoach and or fantasy sport. Our Unlimited League, you can still join. We'll allow you to join up until the first round of buys, which is, I think, round 12 for more than two team buys. 913351, I repeat, 913351. A Supercoach Champions ring will be available to the winner of this league. So thanks to the guys at Supercoach Rings for sorting us out there. I'll do some research this pod, and I think whoever got the top score last week in that league, I reckon we'll send a standard squeeze pack out to as well, yeah. boys. What do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon. Well earned. Absolutely. Yep. Jesus and Christ. Well, while we're on it, boys, <laughs> our first lot of games tonight that we're going to talk about are going to be brought to you by The Standard Squeeze, helping you drink responsibly and conveniently. You can go to the website, thestandardsqueeze.com, and use the code INSIGHT15 to get yourself 15% off 
everything in store. So we're going to start with Collingwood versus St Kilda, where teams mm-hmm. have dropped, what, about an hour ago, Skitty? Yep. They have dropped, and who we got? So Charlie Dean is probably the uh, big one for some people where, you know, mm-hmm. they may have been looking yeah. to bring uh, Zach Reed uh, since he's gone down for four to six, yeah. um, unfortunately, with the hammy. So, um, yeah, he's been omitted. Unbelievably, Ash Johnson's been omitted. Could not believe that one. I mean, jeez, who would have seen that coming? And mm-hmm. Johnny Noble omitted, but I believe – was he sub last round? I believe he was. Jo- Johnny Noble. Or are yeah. you talking Finn McRae? Oh, yeah, Finn McRae was. That's right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yep. So John, Johnny John Noble, Noble wasn't omitted. even in the squad. No. Yeah. Um, and then Will Hoskin Elliott is managed, and in comes Billy Frampton, Tom Mitchell, and Reef McGuinness. Uh, for the Saints, I think everyone uh, is keen to see how this goes with the old boner going down there because Jack Sinclair is in. Zach Jones is also in, which I don't mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lance mm-hmm. Collard has been omitted, and Brad Crouch has been omitted. Yeah, quiet. Only had 15 touches right. and had minimal impact on the contest. So yeah. for anyone that tried to go left field and pick Crouch in your side, you're probably going to look at moving him on. Mm. There's a few in the chat. A few <laughs> saying, g'day, Dave and Global, g'day, legends. Travis Lubke, if Saron can go 170 against the Lions, watch him put up 200. I've actually nah. got some stats that back up that he will not do that this week. Um, and David Moore, Michael Higginson, Bond 162. David Ryan, yeah. 269 for Luke Ryan. But if he gets that, I'm going to delete that because I don't have the bloke. <laughs> but anyway, Stephen Suda, Sarong 180. There's a bit of love for Sarong in the chat at yeah. the moment. But mm-hmm. players to watch for Collingwood, Herbie. Who's your number one in this game, mate? I guess it would be Dacos if you're picking him for high score of the round. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, like I said, I think uh, Pi has absolutely smashed them. Um, mm-hmm. Make a statement, win by 40, 50 points. Um, and, yeah, Dacos just looks... If he can look a class above, a class above, that's what he looks. <laughs> um, so he just looks amazing this year. So um, watch for a monster game from him. Um, and then, yeah, tries to make a statement. How about you, boys? Uh, yeah, I like, I like, I think I like the pies in this game. Saints weren't horrible against Geelong. Um, so I don't mind Collingwood in this game as well. Uh, Dugowie had a 96 um, after his shocking first round, but he's got a massive break even, so that's a no for me. Darcy Cameron has done well in the ruck for the last two weeks now. He's got a break even of 58, not for me either, though, coming up against Rowan Marshall. Mm-hmm. Um, Charlie Dean, we know that he is now gone, so uh, let's be looking elsewhere. Braden Maynard, this one is interesting, though. 449K at the moment. He's got a break-even of 25, coming off of a 93 and a 121 in his first two games. He's currently owned by 1% of teams. He's a little bit on my watch at the moment, the old bruz. Mm. I just don't know if I have the balls to, you know, downgrade short or something like that. Like, you know, still like what I'm going with, you know, with Sheasel, Houston kind of areas as well, as well with Nick Dacos. So... I don't know, but it, it is definitely something that's catching my eye. How about you, Horsey? Jeez. Uh, as Asa uh, Herbie, <laughs> hope the trend of you picking donkeys continues. I'd love to see him go 3-0. and oh. <laughs> And Jez Phelan just decides not to put anything in the chat. So good for you for remaining mute, Jezza. Ripper yeah. bloke. He's, he's our mate from America that was watching last year. He's now moved to oh, back to Melbourne just so then he can do super coach in normal people's time. So Smart. for me, I'm actually going to tip an upset. I'm going the same as. I'd love to see Collingwood go 0-3. I think their chemistry is not quite right. If you look back at the last three games between these two teams, St Kilda has won one of the past three. They've lost by 17 points and by six points the last two times they've played. I think the ruck is going to be a big Mm. talking point this round. Darcy Cameron versus Rowan Marshall. My only concern for the Saints is are they going to be able to kick a big enough score to be able to win this game? But let's, let's just say Saints by two goals. For this one, but in regards to Saints plays, when we're talking Super Coach, Jack Steele looked back to his best last week, 119 in the first round, 529k looks set to be one of the top mids or top 12 mids for this year. Anyway, our boy the Boner, as nicknamed by yeah. the boys, Benny in the chat, Johnny Noble. We will get to Noble, mate. 102 <laughs> in his first game, looks to have a good role, only 284k. I'm actually excited to see what he can do alongside Jack Sinclair. Uh, mm-hmm. Isaiah Wanganin Malera, same as the Boner, 101 in the first game, 475k. Raul Marshall, 
he looks to be top level when we're talking rucks in Supercoach. Mm. 127 in his first game. And Darcy Wilson, 130K, started the year with a 66. He looked really good with ball in hand. Now, I see the Benny 20s in the chat. Noble, Noble, talk Johnny Noble. What do you want yeah. me to talk about, mate? Didn't play senior footy last week. He'll be back this week and might get you an 80. Not really super coach I, relevant. I reckon I know what he's talking about. What's he talking about? How Noble is the unluckiest footballer in the league. Oh, Markoff is absolutely. playing in front of him. What is If he moved clubs, he would absolutely... You'd love to have him at North. Get... Maybe don't bring David Noble back, but bring bring Johnny Noble in. <laughs> David Fuck Noble. That. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, yeah. I don't know what is Noble in. He's not. He's omitted. That's what he's talking about. He's out. Mate, he's not. But no, he didn't like play on the first the, round either, did he? No, on the on the injury on the yeah. team selected, it says Charlie Dean omitted, <laughs> Alex Johnson omitted, Will Hoskin Elliott Mal- managed in his Frampton Mitchell, Tom Mitchell, and Reef McGuinness. He wasn't so, even in the first round. He's, no, like he's, no, not so in. he's obviously just copping the fucking short end of the straw and he's just not in again. So yep. I don't know what you want us from us, Benny. Um, yeah, Noble's yeah. the emergency. So yeah, yeah. he's hard done Let's, by from not getting into the side, but fuck, he's for, nothing on Supercoach. For, for a Supercoach <laughs> um, show that we're doing, we're talking way too much about a player that's not playing at all. So let's yeah. fuck him off and let's <laughs> move on to the next game. He reckons Markov's here. Oh, piss yeah, piss off, Mark off. Yeah, right. I got yeah, you. yeah, Good that's mo, right. Um, Great oh, Ripper Mo. Ripper Mo. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Adelaide and Geelong and Adelaide Oval. So 7.40 oh, yeah. Friday night, players to watch for Adelaide Herbie. Oh, Jordy Dawson's uh, pissing me off a little bit. Uh, he was a bit slow last week. So um, just one of those guys. What do you have? 82 last week. So he'll his price will drop. So. Have a look out for him, but I still do think his quality and it was just a bit of a shit game last week, wasn't it? Yeah. So wet mm. and just they couldn't get in it. Yeah. Um, no Rory stuff. Laird, still a fantasy pig. Um, you got to consider him. Matty Crouch, decent, 114 mm. last week. He looked good in the wet. So one to have a look at if you're looking at fringe, you know, fringe high, uh, high to medium uh, price players, then you can have a look mm. at him. And then Rankin, 97 last week, came under a bit of fire with his lack of defensive pressure, but he bounced back. So I reckon this week they're all going to go pretty big and it's going to be a big Crows win. That's my prediction. Mm-hmm. Geelong aren't good. Um, no. That's what's going to happen. I'm with you on that one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Skitty? I like the fact that you just said Geelong aren't good after beating St. Kilda last week. But Oh, no, sorry, Mick tipped Saints. Don't worry about it. Let's just go back to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I agree. I, I think I think the Crom are going to get up here. Uh, I think it does depend a lot on if Tex plays or not because Geelong... He's could, in. He is in. He'll be, he'll, he'll be in. Yep, there was something Good. released not too long ago that he will be back this round. Love that. Okay, then I'm tipping Adelaide. Um, I went sideways with one of my moves to start the year and I picked Jordan Dawson as my mid two and I regretted the fuck out of it last week. But I'm just really hoping that was because of the wet weather. Um, and someone else that I really regretted because when we're in the uh, Discord, which everyone should join, um, we were talking during the Geelong practice match that how much we loved the way that Max Holmes was playing. We loved his role. Mm-hmm. And then I chose Nick Martin over Max Holmes, and I'm spewing after round one. So, Maxi Holmes, he's still only he'll 446k for this week and next. So, yeah. still got time to do it. But, mate, his role is fantastic. Um, him and Stewart are the ones that are rebounding out of deep 50. So, hopefully, he gets that DPP for defender, and then he can get a better spot. Jesse, Mc, Jesse Cameron, that goal he kicked, he's working. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's just, he's <laughs> unreal. Um, Really, really clean when the ball when he got the ball in hand. How's, yeah. how's our man Ollie Dempsey? I mean, he's we've nice, had a watch of this man, but geez, yep. that skill he is something else. He is mm-hmm. uh bloody good, and I think the job security was the yeah, thing that we may have just had a little yeah. bit of a worry about it, but yeah, I think he's good there. And Jai yeah. Clark, mm-hmm. he had 13 super coach points from 13 touches, but there's no way he's going to be that bad this week. He looked like it was just first game jitters. Um, yeah. but the role is nice. So yeah. expect I'm him backing him back. to bounce back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll bounce in, uh, actually. Yeah, I I think all three of us are on Adelaide over there. Sorry, yep. Acidoxian, but yeah, yeah Adelaide at home. Right. They won all their games last year there, and the two they <laughs> lost, they lost by points. So mm-hmm. I think it'll be a four goal win to Adelaide. Is there anyone we're missing from those two teams? Or do you reckon we've covered everyone pretty well? I think um for anyone that picked up Chris Burgess as a a slight little mm. forward line pick. You'll have to drop him 100 and 
I think he was 129k or something around there. Not really worth it. He only scored, I think, 30 last week. And with Tex Walker coming back, he'll slot straight into that role. Yeah. Um, and there were two. Tommy there Stewart. was Luke. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy Stewart. Stewart. Is Stewart. Yeah. Tommy Stewart, Maxi Home off the half. Maxi Home, sorry, off the back mm. uh, flank for Geelong look really good as well. Luke Pedler still yeah. a bit iffy with that nose that was rearranged to the other side of his face. And Jordan yeah. Butts, there's no word on his foot as yet. So mm. watch this space there. Saturday, we have three games, and we'll start Ooh. off by Kanga, 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 Roo, fucking Roo versus Frio <laughs> at Marvel Stadium. Oh, yeah, Manor. Uh, Sorry, Asa yeah. just brought up Manor. That was actually probably a good one. So it's if, sub. If he comes in. Wasn't yeah, he sub? He was sub. Do you think yeah. he, he starts now? Um, I don't know. But one trade that I think I'm doing this week is to piss him off if he's sub again. I'm going to bring in Dempsey because, uh, yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah. He's the same peddler, um, has a Mr. Potato yeah. Head nose. <laughs> yeah. And what about this? From Mick Higginson, he's two berries with a boner in a team, a good thing. Absolutely, mate. <laughs> Big time. Absolutely. Um, and I guess this one's for you, Skitty. Off topic, lads, but do any of you <laughs> like trains? They, <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from, but good on I, you, mate. Let's, neither do I, but yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, North <laughs> Melbourne, let's talk about She's God. I'll let both mm. of his bloody squabble over who wants to talk about him. Nah, Herbie can go. All uh, right. You won't hear me say this much this year, uh, but I was wrong. All right. Why Thank did you. I take this out? Why did I have? She- Why did I not get Sheezel in? Thank you. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, but anyway, look, that that just clip that because that will only happen maybe <laughs> once or twice this year. Um, yeah, he just looks awesome, doesn't he? And uh, yeah, he's, yeah. like what you said is the Rolls Royce. So fish. Yeah. A couple of those other guys back there, they um, they really look to him and, and uh, Colby as well. So mm-hmm. they're just a class above. So you got to have yeah. them. Uh, Colby looks really good. Mm-hmm. Um, just his line breaking and just like just oh, yeah. that left foot. I think when you're classy and you have a left foot, it just stands out way more, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. It does, doesn't For some reason it yeah. does. Uh, so he's going to be a star. Then you've got Sherry. Uh, he scored 107. So his first hit out as the sole ruck. The role is there. He's in six percent of teams, so he's. I think he's one to watch, especially if uh, Grundy and and a couple of the other guys start to struggle a bit here and there. He's someone to look at how he goes next game because then he can go up quite a lot from mm-hmm. there. Um, LDU, he's seven elevens himself. Uh, that was a tongue twister. Uh, one twenty one in his first uh, hit out, still in only seven percent of teams. Uh, I want to get him in, but I've got too many North players. But I'd love to get LDU in. <laughs> he just looks. Like he was cruising a little bit in preseason, but he looks to mm-hmm. take it up another step. So it'll be interesting with North, with all the players that they have and, and that are super coach relevant, like how who's going to stand out and who's going to fade. That's what I'm really looking at this week yep. and next week as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm very sorry, Harry Sheasel. <laughs> You're a legend. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Zach Fisher, does do we hold on to him if we've got him, or are you moving him on? He's gone for me. I've got him, but I'm holding. uh, But it'll. I'm trying to do some trades this week to free up some cash to bring Shees in next week. That's Mm -hmm. the plan before the price goes up. So Fish, you got one more chance, mate. One more chance, (laughs) Zach. Come on, don't don't let us down, Fish. And the players to watch for for Fremantle, Caleb Sarong. Went massive Milk. last week with a 170. This guy is a jet and will likely make money in round three. But, but, but. would you would you like to <laughs> go with the honors, Skitty? No, no, mate. All you, all you, brother. So we we were doing a bit of reading and some research before, and uh, Took Miller mm-hmm. scored 140 or almost 140 mm-hmm. last round, and as evidenced by our friend Jeremy uh, Feeling in the chat as well, and so. Took Miller had 17 less touches than Caleb Sarong and only scored 30 points less. Mm-hmm. Not every day are you going to get Caleb Sarong getting 46 touches. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just not too sure if you don't have him, whether you're going up to him just yet. But if mm-hmm. you started with him and you need a correction trade, yeah, maybe, but you're not going to get 170 every week. Uh, we've got Global in the chat. Is Powell worth a look? Uh, yeah, that was one I was going to bring up. That wasn't uh, that wasn't there. 
I don't mind it for um, if you want to go somewhere around 300K, you know, around the Lions mark or something like that. I wouldn't be looking at it uh, this yeah. week, wait for the price to go up uh, for Lions and whatnot to make a bit of cash elsewhere. But yeah. uh, it, it was pretty impressive. He had a 95 um, and he was getting a lot of midfield time rotated through. He started on the bench, then came through a little bit of half forward flank. I don't mind the role. I like the player he is. 26 disposals as well. That's nice. Um, so, I mean, he's definitely worth a shout and definitely worth a look, but I probably wouldn't be doing it this week. There we go. Mm. Uh, Luke Jackson, 547K, 113 mm. as a ruck. I'm a little nervous about his role moving forward, but going back and watching the game, he actually scored a lot of his points when he did go forward. They're yep. looking to bring in Reedy this week. So uh, we were discussing off air that if that is likely the case and that's the way that they're going to play it moving forward and if Darcy misses any more time than anticipated he may be worth bringing in but let's just see what's going on with the Darcy ruck thing first but I would just say as well with Luke Jackson if you do have him in your team I would definitely be holding him for this week purely because of the fact that if he does play ruck fine he'll get nice scores there if he goes forward, he's a head and a half taller than every other North Melbourne back who's, who have yeah. little to fuck all experience. So he can still go out there and kick a bag. Who's who on North Melbourne's team is going to play on Jackson? It would be if they if he goes forward, it would be Toby Pink or Callan Dawson, and he's Ooh. massive compared to them Ooh, with a okay. way bigger jumping ability. Because Biggie oh, yeah. Newen has also got a popped up on the injury report with ribs. Yeah. Oh, that could be really nasty. Yeah. Right um, Luke Ryan, right, 611K. And, What's that? Sorry, um, Asa just said, yeah, Heaney is just way too juicy for, for Jackson. Yeah. So I can also understand that Heaney is, you have to jump on him now. Absolutely. 168 super coach points for Luke Ryan, has a very super coach friendly game. Nate Fife, 283K. The beast, the beast mode is back. The boy, 102 super coach points. Skiddy, you were right. Big Thank horse, you. you were wrong. That's okay. <laughs> Happy to admit defeat where warranted. Hey, he looks, he looks right. fit and played well, didn't he? Mate, he looked sensational. He was just in and under. He was going for it. He was breaking packs as well. Look at like the five year old. I was really loving it. You'd really hate if you picked James Harms ahead of him. Yep. And <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. And Ew. Hayden Young, Hayden Young, 525K, 70 super coach points, 11 clangers. In that 70 super coach points, mm-hmm. I am holding for this week. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are moving off him, but he's just as likely to get 100 this week as what he was last week. With take out the clangers, so what's that minus four? Is it for a clanger? Yeah, he, he could easily go 100 to 105 this week. He yep. might lose a little bit of money, but let's see what's going on there. Mm-hmm. So, agreed. Uh, Ian, I hate super coach. His 15 year old son got. 2,273. That's a fucking <laughs> massive score, mate. So congratulations yeah, to your boy. Um, and Suvlaki is going to is going a trap or give him one more week. Which one are you mate, talking about, mate? He's talking about Young. Young? Uh, keeping yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Keeping him, for sure. I want to go sideways to Sheasel, but I'm waiting one more week, mate. But Good I call. do have... Still 250K in the bank, so I might be able to upgrade elsewhere to get Sheasel in. Next game. One, sorry, yeah. just quickly before that, one other guy that I want to bring up, Clark. Jordan Clark off the halfback from Freo. He looked absolutely fucking sensational uh, last week against Brisbane. And his run and his kicking ability was just fantastic. I know he kicked it at like 80-something percent. It was outrageous. Yeah. But still, like, he looked so good with his run and dash off of halfback. So, um, that's just another one that keeps your eye on um, when you're tossing up with what you're going to do with Hayden Young. Absolutely. Uh, and I keep finding a reason not to pick Luke Ryan every year. He's probably top three defender this year. Yeah, based off round yep. one, mate, probably. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Jordan Clark they- is 50-50 this week. He's on the injury report. Yes. Oh, shit, right So The other well, reason that's- why I know what I've taken an interest in it is I've got him in a draft league. Interesting. So, right over. Just, yeah, watch watch <laughs> there. Uh, players to watch for Hawthorne in the Hawthorne versus Melbourne game, Herbie. Ooh, Massimo D'Ambrosio. Oh. Massimo D'Ambrosio. Not the game by the pizza. D'Ambrosio. Where is it? D'Ambrosio. <laughs> uh, fucking hell, I got him in this week. Uh, fucked me over last week. So I'm... Uh, I'm That's some really good analysis. Yeah. And I'm 
boost, boost, boosting this week. So uh, I even, uh, I've popped up a little bit last week, but I'm uh, it's all good because I'm gonna recover. Um, so I didn't get him in last week, but far out he looked good. Uh, 224k. I think he's gonna be a trading target for most. Uh, what do you have? 30 something disposals and really, really, really clean by foot. So you can see, um, you know, I think he's just got a lot of confidence and he's a confidence player. Um, so he looks really good uh, with the Hawks. Uh, Joshy Weddle, his kid's going to be a star. 94 super coach points last week. Oh, he's so good, um, isn't he? Only at 373K. So he's someone you definitely have to look at. James Sicily. Mm-hmm. 637K. Uh, what is this garbage soundbite? So, can someone oh. do a garbage soundbite? Yeah, <laughs> garbage, absolute garbage. You look like crap. Um, if you're gonna go primo, gotta go a Stewart or someone like that, and he just looks like he's just an idiot. You don't pick idiots in your team. <laughs> uh, Nikki Watson. Now, this one, oh, I followed this kid for a long time because I thought he was gonna come <laughs> north. Um, 189k. He's going to take some time to develop. Uh, he did show some flashes, but I think he's just going to be uh, a bit of a moments player, and he's not going to be super coach relevant at all, uh, probably for his career. To be honest, um, Jack Ginnivan. Now, this is the one that's fucking Ooh. shocked the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> I just thought he can't do shit, and he's not going to do shit. And then he started to do shit, mm. but good shit, right? So. 71 at half time last week, finished on 91, and he's playing that high half forward role really good. So, mm. dare I say it, can you get Jack Ginnivan in your team? It's the weirdest <laughs> fucking thing I've ever said in my life. But I don't know. No. This, this is probably the most relevant one for um. For sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. <laughs> I, I'm just That's impressed with Genevan's like ability that he was like pushing up to the like backhand yeah. side of the wing and like onto mm-hmm. the half back flank as well. That really impressed me with his running ability and being able to do that. It, Hawthorne have really let him off the chain, so I like that from Genevan. But uh, then, I'm pretty so we only got twenty in the last half, but Essendon kind of like half tagged him off of the half forward flank, so, didn't they? Even against the doggies, like in that funny. practice yeah. match. Yeah. He, he yeah. was looking really good. He looked everywhere as a high yeah. half forward. And I did not think he could play this role at all. It's the hardest yeah. position to play in footy. And Jack yeah. fucking Ginnivan's playing it. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's pretty impressive, in fairness. I yeah. also liked, um, good to see Dylan Moore out there as well. Yeah. Um, he's a bit a bit pricey, but 104 is nice. And, yep. Uh, yeah, that's, that's just one okay. to keep the eye on there as well. All right, so for Melbourne, Maxi Gorn went really large, didn't he? Plus 160, 583K. He's yeah. got an 89 break even, but he looked back to his best. Uh, Clayton Oliver, 674K. He's got 179 break even this week. Will likely mm-hmm. um, drop in price. If he gets to around 640K, we've almost got to jump on him. Uh, mm-hmm. Jack Billings, he's on the bubble this week. He has a break even of five. Very mm-hmm. interesting after his 119 last week. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not sold. You boys? Yeah. Uh, look, we've had this question so many goddamn times today. No, mm-hmm. I'm happy to keep answering it, but I, when you're coming down to it and you're going Berry or Billings, I'm leaning Berry um, purely because Billings's um, super coach score, like, you know, impact will completely solely base on if the D's are winning or not. He doesn't run yeah. defensively. He's literally just like the link up kick between the midfield and the forward line. Mm-hmm. They smash the dogs. Billings got a shitload of it, hence why he got, what, 15 marks or some crap, and then a boatload of inside 50s. So that's why I think I lean Barry. Was it was it 15 marks from 23 touches? Uh, yeah, let me just double check yeah, that. Yeah, it was. 15 it was. uncontested marks, 23 yeah. touches. Yeah. yeah. Fucking ridiculous. Unreal. Five tackles, which is nice for him, but mm-hmm. I still don't trust him. We're going all right in this Melbourne team when uh, they're smashing teams. Yeah. Uh, Ian, I will get to your comment about Hogan when we're talking about mm. GWS, mate. So stand by for that one. Uh, Caleb Windsor, he started off really well, 180K, uh, break even of minus 30, even though he was subbed off at three quarter time last week. I reckon that's purely just from a management point of view to help the kids get through the early rounds. Blake Howes, 123K, another 64 Good. this week. Yep. 
a monster break even of minus mm. 86 and will make you close to 80k this weekend with another score Ooh. like that. If you Ooh. don't have him, you've almost got to get him in for that price, Jen. Mm-hmm. And Marty Hall looked really good to his return in his return. Sorry to senior footy. He can play on bigs and smalls, which I reckon his versatility is going to keep him in the side yep. and keeps the likes of Tomlinson out of the team. He's a lot more versatile than Tomlinson for me. So he's a nice downgrade option if you wanted to go, say, Gibkiss down to Hall this week and go a week early. Yep. You know what else I liked? The switch for um, Tom McDonald going down back. I thought he looked mm. really good down back, and that actually allowed Hall to play a little bit more on the smaller side. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I actually didn't mind that swing back for Tommy McDonald. He's not going to do that every single week. Um, also, too, uh, Froffy's May, geez, he was ap- he was so lucky last week because uh, Chompers Harms got the one week for headbutting him. But just imagine if he hit him with his teeth. Stephen May would be out with concussion, the poor bastard. <laughs> so very lucky there. <laughs> Did you know, I'm just going back through the stats, but when Tommy McDonald was playing half back for Melbourne, mm-hmm. he was priced at 530k. That's the last yep. time he played as a full-time back. Mm, that's very he, interesting, isn't it? He is only at, what, 300K 300. at the moment? Yeah, 300K mm. forward as well, he's which al- is quite yep. nice. He's, he's only played one game, so watch this space on him. But that, yep. yeah, there, there could be a nice downgrade option there mm-hmm. for you. All right, Sydney versus Essendon at the SCG. Herbie, Sydney cool. look good at the moment, don't they? They do look good. Uh, but I don't think they're going to keep it up. Uh, where is Phil in the chat? I want to rile him up a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> everyone's saying Sydney, the new flag favourites. We'll, we'll get to them, but we'll go through the players first. How about that? Uh, James Rowbottom, huge 142 last week, tackling machine, only in 5% of teams. Uh, he's at 467K, so definitely mm-hmm. one to look at on the bubble. Uh, my man, my man, Isaac. Uh, Isaac Heaney, 483K, another 136 uh, last week or this week. Uh, break even of actually, how much is the break even? Minus fucking 12. Wow. Yeah. He could go large against the Dons. He mm. could. Is this, I don't, I is don't this, think he's going to keep it up. I don't. Is this is this the bloke that you said not to pick and to drop? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the exact bloke. And, and look, everybody's <laughs> saying, everybody's saying, right? Heaney this, Swans that. Uh, every Everyone's saying Swans for the flag. Heaney's gonna, he's killing it, blah, blah, blah. But they do this all the time. Like Heaney does this for weeks and then he just goes missing. So, look, I don't think the Swans are going to do that much. Uh, I think they're a mid-table team and I think Heaney is an average to better, a little bit better yep. than average player. And he's going to justify oh. that with the next few weeks, all right? You'll see it with the okay. scores in the okay. next few weeks. Okay. Um. Chad Warner, I actually like him with the TNs. Uh, he stood out. Five hundred. The Ashe, uh, so 125, a break-even of 68. Looks locked in as an inside mid. He actually does look very good. Uh, Brody Gundy, 481K. Even after the semi one last week, he has a break-even of 57, so he will improve. But he's someone I think you need to look at um, just to see how he goes this next couple of weeks. Um, Goulden. 622k what a primo bloke 159 break even uh could drop below 600k this week mm-hmm. jimmy jordan our boy insight fantasy sports zone jimmy jordan uh yeah, so sorry. james jordan 275k looks very good in his new role um with sydney so <laughs> firm hold break even of a huge minus 12 and then <coughs> Another insight fantasy sports boy, Matty Roberts, 159K, minus 58 break even. That might be the, the biggest minus for this week. Will make great coin in the role he's playing. So that's pretty, the pretty close to it. Team ones. Mm-hmm. He is top three when it comes to break evens. Uh, yep. We've got uh, Berry from Gold Coast. We've got Howes from Melbourne. And then we've got Matty Roberts from Sydney. Um, when we're talking about Isaac Heaney, I've actually gone and done a little bit of stats digging. Yeah, and there you go. he Don't is playing a very, very, very similar role to, dare I say, Marcus Bontempelli at the moment. Mm-hmm. He's starting in the midfield. He rolls forward. He's resting forward. He's not like a midfielder where he rests on the bench. 
He does get some time on the bench, but I think it was like 88% time on ground last week and 86 mm-hmm. week one. Yep. He's almost a must get for me this week. Yep. Couldn't agree more right. there, mate. I think they yeah. I, I think they're just running it through him and as well. They're gonna keep doing it until um until it fails. Tay, Tay Adams or um mm-hmm. uh what's he Luke Parker comes back and <laughs> um Johnny Longmuir has already said um that they all they think they need like Henny's class up forward. So the brother of Justin Longmuir, or is it uh, Longmuir? Whatever. I normally call him Horse, but your horse, so I didn't want to. I wanted to actually call him his actual name, and I yeah, no. realised that I didn't I, know it. I, I give you permission. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Horse Longmire. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, just quickly, Scorch Earth said, "Are we boosting this week, fellas?" I know that there is a few of the boys in here that are boosting. Yes. So yes. Yep. Um, I will be, but not overly convinced as to where I'm going yet, but I am going mm-hmm. to work my way around some cash gen. And also for Acidoxian and Kizza, we have someone that wants to be vice president in the Fuck Bevo Off Club. So David Morgan, <laughs> we've taken your application seriously, mate. And Davo, he's bro- actually called the cone around here because he is. he's a traffic cone. Or just the <laughs> overgrown Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> now, uh, Brody Grundy, he had six frees against last yep. week too, which kept his score down to 71. Players mm-hmm. to watch for Essendon, Zachy Merritt, 650K. He's an elite mm-hmm. ball user. He's mm-hmm. absolutely unbelievable. Nicky Martin, he was really poor by foot last week. But I anticipate, I've been very vocal in our Discord about this, he will be better. And if you have him, you hold him, please. Archie mm-hmm. Perkins, 368K, looked really good as a mid last week. Watch for his wall for when... Parish returns. Andrew McGrath, 131 last week. Really good start to the year in only mm-hmm. 0.8% of teams as well. Will Setterfield started last year like this and then he burnt people. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to get hurt again, boy? No question about oh, it. I am ready no. to get hurt again. Also, to everyone, just remember Darcy Parish did not play. Darcy That's Parish right. will most likely play this week, I believe. Or is it next week? Um, he could be back this week. Yeah, right. So but watch, yeah, watch for teams. Watch that one. Yeah. Yep. And then we've got Zach Reed, who's got the hammy, uh, confirmed mm. four to six weeks, which is damn is shit. But I'm actually going to hold him for now. Yep. I've got bigger issues to attend to. Herbie, do you have yep. Reed? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Okay. And David uh, Morgan, your application has been approved by our Discord operations <laughs> manager. So well, welcome aboard, mate. <laughs> now, boys, should we talk about the Supercoach World Cup? Yeah, mate, get into it. Yeah, I've got to find the thing for it. <laughs> if you ever thought you were an elite Supercoach player, well, now you can prove it with our year-round Insight Fantasy Sports Supercoach World Cup featuring all four Supercoach sports in NRL, AFL, NBL, and BBL. It's $20 now to join if you didn't join before the start of the year. And, yeah, just got to get in quick before the entry (laughs) fee does go up even further because we want Mm -hmm. to not allow people to think that they've got a good start to the year and then just join for the hell of it. We're going to reward the people that are in it from the start. Your rankings will be calculated together and the best performer over the four sports combined will take out the best super coach player in the world. Join our Discord to find out more. So our next lot of games that we've got are going to be brought to you by Ryan from Astute Newstead. Probably who's got a better moustache, Ryan or Skitty? Oh, you've got the beard going now, don't you? I've got the beard. Yeah, I've got the beard, so I'm going to have yeah. to give it a Ryan, unfortunately, at the moment. But I think Justin's kicked his ass. Oh, he's, you've been growing yours <laughs> for seven years, though, haven't you? It's just, yeah, it's literally 17 months. Yeah. <laughs> Um, are you wanting to buy your first home or even an investment property and don't know how? Are you a current owner with an interest rate of over 6.2%? I can guarantee you that Ryan can help you. Reach out to him. His uh, link will be in our link tree down below, or you can give him a call on 0431 784 mm-hmm. Okay. Sunday, we have Western Bulldogs versus Gold Coast to Ballarat. Herbie, do you want to go ahead with the Western Bulldogs players, mate? I'd love to. I would absolutely love to. Marcus Bontempelli. 724k 126 super points super coach points to start i don't know what's happening with me tonight boys my tongue is it's just, it's just everywhere i think it's because i'm not drinking alcohol tonight i was about to say have you got any beers yeah i was drinking coke coke zero for fuck's sake um, problem. yeah i know uh he is unbelievable uh he is a very very good player 
but I do think he'll drop in price a little bit. Uh, Timmy English, 715K, 119 in his first game, will be better for the run, that's for sure. Um, I think there is other players, though, that are priced better in the ruck division that are just better value, uh, so wait till he drops. Uh, Lockie Bramble, 292K. This one is very interesting, 107 in his first game, so it's a close watch this week, but don't jump the gun too early. Uh, Jason, Joe... Fucking Hannison. How many times are we going to mention this bloke? He, he is literally an insight fantasy sport veteran. Um, 416K. <laughs> looks to be the main distributor off halfback. I can't believe I got distributor right the first time. Uh, Daniel has come back in after being the sub. Uh, so we'll see how his role is affected by that. Mm. You don't want him in a high half forward role um, mm. where he just sits there and gets two possessions. Uh, Tommy Liber Liber oh, I fucked it up again. Tommy Liberatore, <laughs> uh, 648k, had a dog of a day. He will almost certainly bounce back. And then the this is a really interesting one. Uh, mm. Riley Sanders, 184k. Bevo, don't fucking sub him off. Only 43 in his first game, but he did look a bit clunky. Um, so mm -hmm, yeah. I think it's just first game nerves to be honest because Darcy Wilson, he he looked mm. the same like. He was yeah. getting into spots and he looked really well moving, um, you know, evading yeah. and, and you know, getting the ball. But he just looked like they just, they're just first game of, you know, their first year players. So just yeah. dumb kicks going to nowhere. Yeah. So they'll, they'll learn from that, especially yeah. Sanders. Sanders is one that um, It'll he was really in, the, in his juniors for having a lot of time on the ball. So he'll be better for it. Maybe just that star studded. Doggy's lineup. He was a bit intimidated first game, but he'll be better mm -hmm. for the hit out. Uh, just for Travis, all good. Martin has never played the role before, and he's a poor kick. I disagree, mate. If you go back through the stats, he's actually he goes at over seventy five percent disposal mm -hmm. efficiency in his career, and was known as a good kick coming up through the system. He trained with West Coast twice. Don't know why West Coast didn't pick him up. Hence, mm -hmm. why I have confidence that he will get better. Mm -hmm. Skitty, Gold Coast. Yep. We've got a heap of midfielders who have got no break evens. Mate, unbelievable. Just quickly, I know everyone's jumping at the bit to get Massimo D'Ambrosio, but one guy I am seriously looking at and considering is Lockie Bramble, and that's why I haven't pulled the trigger on Mass yet because I know he's 70K more, but shit, I really liked how Bramble played. Mm -hmm. But as as Herbie said, Caleb Daniel scares the absolute shit out of me of what happens if he actually plays a full game. But mm -hmm. um, Gold Coast, this midfield is un. Fucking believable how good they are, and they're all doing it. And it's it's blowing my mind that I know it's only been two games, but still two consistent games of these four. Took Miller 545k, break even of 49, has come back, absolutely killing it. Another massive 140 last week. Um, looks extremely fit. Mm -hmm. Matt Rao, Matt Rao, Matt Rao, Matt Rao. Um, Matt Rao. Mr. Mr. Clearance, Mr. Contested Footy, break even of 25. At 571k, looks so bloody good, and I believe he's one of the uh, one of the horse, one of the calves in the stable horse. He's one of your favourite players. Absolutely, oh. I love myself a ginger ninja. He's yeah. just a bull inside, isn't he, mate? Nice little grass eater. He's fantastic. He really belongs yeah. in your stable. Can I just mention this? Can I just mention this? Um, yeah. you know, I'm not a betting man, but I just uh, slipped on a I slipped on a banana the other day, and then I got on the betting apps. Um, and Matty Rowell is third favorite for the Brownlow. Did you yeah, know he that? Was paying, he was paying $51 in the preseason. Yeah, he did because I currently have a lot of money on Tom Green. Um, we got the we got the sex train, Alex Sexton, 133k. Everyone knows toot, toot. That he's in their teams. Hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, break even of minus 62. He, exactly what we wanted to see from Sexton. Um, I know we only got like a 63 last week. Don't care. Price is going up. Yeah. Sam Flanders. Stupid, sexy Flanders, man. Stupid, like, sexy Flanders. Oh, he just doesn't get as much midfield time as the other mids, and he just takes the piss when he's in there. I just don't know how to read it. He still gets the ball when he's playing in the forward line as well. It's It's got me stuffed. Uh, break even of 22. He's played absolutely unreal. Forward line and mid. Um, yep. To those that got him, well played there in the forward line. Uh, Noah Anderson. 586k, 129 last week. But then again, all of the Gold Coast midfielders did. Break even of 74. He is probably the 
fourth option on my list for super coach wise. I know he's probably more up there for Gold Coast players for them to actually win because he is so good with the ball. And then this man, Tom Berry. Mm-hmm. Don't know where the fuck Dimmer's done this from, but he did not look anywhere near this last year. And now he's 163K. He's got a break even of minus 75. Mate, he's I I I didn't want to make many trades or anything like that this week, but shit me, he was the first thing that I had to get into my team because he is an absolute must at the moment. He's going to get like 80K this week easily. Yeah, so just looking back through last year, whenever he scored kind of okay, he backed it up with an absolute shitter. Mm-hmm. So he scored 90 against Port Adelaide in round 18 and backed it up with a 42 against GWS. In round 19, he scored 68 against Geelong in round 10 and backed it up with a 22 against Carlton. But you're right. I think the role's there. Yeah. It looks a lot more established mm. and he looks a lot more part of the game plan when they're in the forward line under sure. Dimmer that he did under um, Big Guts. Yep. Yep. Stewie G. Stewie. Um, yeah. I. Our team, the Gold Coast Suns. Like, it, it yes. will be eventually Tassie. And congratulations to Tassie for getting your side and over 100K members within, what was it, 24 hours? That's fucking yeah. phenomenal. And I signed up. I love the fact that we've got a so Tassie team now. Yep, I but signed up too. you sign up, Herbie? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I sign up with them? I'm not Oh, okay. Cam Kangaroos play down there a lot, don't they? They're probably I want to be a... I just want to be a founding member. How good's that? Get to be a founding member. That's late. Yeah. Uh, Ian, we're still. I want to join the teams that uh, do a bit of a cane corn and become a member of the teams that I. Maybe I'll become a member of the Sydney Swans. That that's what I'll do. (laughs) We're gonna live in a ko digital membership. You and Phil can go to games together. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Ian, which I believe could be Matty O'Brien's dad. How do I bring in nine players this week? Great question. Yeah, we're, we're still trying on. to work out. Yeah. What's up? You know, the Fast and the Furious, chuck the NOS on and do a fucking triple boost like Herbie and Ian. That's the <laughs> All right, we got, we got to keep pushing on, lads. Richmond yeah, versus sorry. Port Adelaide. Uh, plays to watch for Richmond. Noah Bolter, he looks to be the Mr. Fix-It this year, doesn't he? Picking it early. He may win their BNF with the way that he's playing at the moment. Nick Vlastwin has been awesome for them so far this year. Break-even of 33, 118 and 134 in the first two games. Jaden Short, disappointing 88 last week, but the role is there. Hold. Mm-hmm. He still has a break-even of 87, and we'll pass that this week. Shy Bolton, shit house. Break-even of 168. He will go down. We picked it early that he mm-hmm. does not play well to start the season, as evidenced by his first two games. And Seth Campbell, 123K, break-even of minus 35 for Campbell. I like mm-hmm. his forward pressure. If you've got him, he is going to make you coin. Probably not as much as the other guys, but he's still going to make you coin. Mm-hmm. Herbie, Port Adelaide plays. Oh, Zachy Butters, 636K. Another make, another that makes footy look very easy. Um, Australia, All Australian incoming for sure. I actually think Rosie looked better this game, um, mm-hmm. but Butters kind of picked it up as of late. So Rosie, for, for me, who's the next player, 601K. Uh, is in cruise control all day, had it on a string, loves his role. So he looks like someone who I think you just got to have a look at him, um, just see how he how he goes the next few weeks. Um, because for me, there. personally, when I was just watching the game, if I was picking the best player, um, it was Rosie for sure. Um, he looked better than Butters. Butters got a lot of cheap disposals, whereas Rosie was really in and under, uh, looked really good. Um, Jason Horn francis 433K. So 112 in his first game. He looked pretty good up forward. Um, only in 4% of teams. He did look actually pretty good up forward. Electric, mm-hmm. hate to say yeah. it, but he does look good. So um, he's one that I think when they're versing the shit of teams and when they're uh, when they're going to, mm-hmm. you know, obviously put the foot down, he's someone who's going to be a big benefit of that. So look out for him. He's really good overhead. Uh, we've always yeah. known that, but he's really good overhead. And if he got his finishing right, which I think comes with confidence, which he's getting, um, then he could be a star. So he's not quite um, in that midfield uh, permanently, but he's looking good as, you know, that high half forward. Um, Mm -hmm. Ollie Wines. This is another Insight Fantasy Sports uh, sponsored player, Ollie Wines. So 463K, (laughs) another 90s game for Winesy. This is what we've come to fucking expect. Good on you, Ollie. 
Soldo, Soldo, 485k. He actually looked fucking good, didn't he? Um, mm. he's, yeah, he, he looked really good today. Um, but remember, West Coast give up the highest score to Rucks. So that's one to consider, mm -hmm. but he did look uh, pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Houston, 114 in his first game. Used the ball really well, really like his role. Uh, pretty standard game for Dan Houston. Um, yep. So, yeah, not much more to say with that. We digress. We move on. What are we going to talk about now? Gord, uh, 100... 182. Lock it in. Lock it in. <laughs> uh, Skitty looks like a Viking. Thank you. W Wines had barely any CBAs. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we've got to expect with him. And Josh Strains, who the Super Coach Whisperer across on our NFL, NRL, sorry, Super Coach show. Did Herbie not get the standard squeeze hat memo? But Skitty is a hot, hot man. Ah, shucks. I look like a Viking and I'm hot. Fuck yeah. Can't yeah. go wrong with that, can I? Yeah, it sounds like a start to a fucking porno, doesn't it? But oh, anyway, mate, I, I love our chat. I'm getting all hot over here. Yeah. Uh, players to watch for West Coast in the West Coast versus GWS game. Uh, Harley Reid tagged in his first game of AFL footy. Fuck mm. me, you know the kid's a bloody jet when Port Adelaide are putting time into him. He looks like he belongs and will get better with fitness. 78 is a nice mm. start to the year. Elliot, yo! 447 day. Looked like he was back to his best and body looks good. Could be a nice little downgrade option next week if Young shits the bed for me as well and I can't get the sheasel. Liam Duggan, 503k, only 49 this past game. Very poor by his standards, but he will come good. Andrew Gaff, well, Andrew Gaff. <laughs> Andrew Gaff. Andrew. He is shit. Herbie? Andrew Gaff? Yeah, yeah he's fucking terrible. He, I can't believe North were going to pick him up a few years ago and pay him like $50 million a year. He looks fucking just <laughs> like a non-football player, doesn't he? Yeah. For someone shocked. who was racking up the ball a few years ago, um, he just looks a little bit allergic to the ball. So I don't know what's happened to him. But Gaffy, if you're hearing me, mate, um, yeah, you're shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> we we might have you on the show maybe. But you've got <laughs> extensive fitness testing to do before you come on here, mate. Uh, Josh Drains, over under 75 back page features for Harley Reid this season. Probably already over. Uh, Maddie Granger, welcome, Maddie. Long time viewer of the show. How's it going, guys? If you ask what score I got in the first round, I will walk. Well, we won't ask because we'd love having Maddie, you. Here. Don't worry about that, mate. As we always say, you yep. stay the course. It's a long, yes, long absolutely. season, buddy. Don't you worry about and that. For Gaff, ever since he broke Brayshaw's jaw, he turned a shit. You know what? You're absolutely right, mate. It may have fucked with his head a little bit, mm. but we've got GWS to talk about. Who are players on the oh. bubble this week? Can I? Can oh. I just pipe in on that? I yeah. think I think Gaff is shit because he was depressed that he didn't get to North Melbourne. That's you the reason. He's not to. Yeah, that's yeah. the reason he's. Shit. So you're probably lucky he didn't get him at North because you'd still be paying him for six years and a million years. Yeah. So probably worked out all right. But anyway, GWS. Hey, it's better than Jared Polak. Oh, um, Skinny, Tommy GWS. Green, un fucking believable. Just. As good as you always say. Thank God I had the C on him last week. So that was brought me up a little bit more. 152 um, after 132 in round zero. Break even of 60. And he's playing West Coast. So this looks very, very nice. Um, yeah, Lockie Whitfield, not bad. Uh, not bad. Break even of 62 at 519K. He's looking good off of the halfback flank. So I think he can be someone to look at. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, if I could just somehow get this bloke into my team, I'd be so happy. Jesse Hogan, man, 800, uh, sorry, 419K with a break even of minus 46. And I swear he's going to kick a bag this week. He's going to kick a bag. He's gone from what? What was it? 100. I think his average at the moment is like 150 something. Outrageous. Um, or he had 150, no, 160 and 140 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I think he'll go big again. Cadman, 129K. Going to be a, uh, I think it's going to be another good game for him. I love how he's getting the backup ruck kind of role as well. Um, minus 56 for him this week in his break evens and uh, could genuinely have a uh, kick a few against West Coast this week. So he's definitely one to watch. Kieran Briggs, if you have him, you hold him. Why? Yeah. West Coast are shit at ruck. So Briggs has a good chance of scoring pretty highly. 
Um, he has a break even of 171, and there is a genuine chance he could hit that this week. So mm -hmm. um, we'll just have to wait and see how we go. Hey, Skitty, we've we got some requests in the chat that maybe you can do it from later. What's that? Do a tongue ring trick. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the things you love to see on a PG-rated show. Yeah, anyway, pay for my OnlyFans and you get extra. Yeah, we're gonna talk. <laughs> we're gonna talk, captains, boys. Stand by. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, captain. So, as a result of Skitty doing some really nice research behind the scenes, we've got some captains' choices here based on historical games against the teams that they're playing against that you may want to look at this week. Skitty, go your hardest, brother. Yeah, mate. Okay, so a few captains that we can look at. Uh, I don't know if they're going to get it, but it might help you for the squeeze of the week and be able to uh, get that extra points in your team. So Bontempelli averages 129 in his last three against the uh, Gold Coast Suns. And in Ballarat, I believe his average is about like 133 or something. So mm -hmm. uh, one to look at there. Zach Butters, last time he played the Tigs, 158. LDU, last time he played Frio, 155. Goulden, last time he played Essendon. In round 20 last year, 152. Um, as we said, Kieran Briggs, West Coast, do give up the most points to uh, Ruckman. Um, Jared Witts, the last two times he's played English, he has an average of 133, if you wow. have Witts. Uh, Matt Rao, Matt Rao, coming off of 155 last week. Last time he played the Dogs, he had 159. So if you still have Matt Rao, Matt Rao, um, looking pretty good. Um, Riley O'Brien bit of left field here, but Riley O'Brien actually has an average of 152 in his last two games against the Cats. So that's a nice little one there. Uh, Jesse Hogan, I am just saying that. I can see that um, Travis said he's up against Barras and McGovern. So am I sure? That's that's awesome. Yes, I'm still sure. If the ball goes in there 550 times in the game, Hogan has a genuine chance to kick six. So yes, I believe Hogan. I know we'll take him over them. Um, Luke Jackson. Um, he may have some ruck roll, but if mm -hmm. he moves forwards, I don't care because Norse backline key defenders are too small and not athletic enough to be able to play on the reach that he possesses. Yeah. So, so Travis, Travis in the chat as well. I've just done some quick research, Trav, waiting on why not to name Strong as VC. I've just done some digging, <laughs> mate. And his last three games against North Melbourne, he averages 109. So yeah. it's not a lofty average against the North Melbourne Footy Club. Um, trade targets, boys. We're going to go Ooh. into who we're looking at for this round. Targets acquired. Let's start with you, Herbie. Who are you looking at this week, mate? Oops. Fucking, I've got a lot of injuries, I'll tell you that much. Um, so a couple of injuries. Gib Kiss, uh, who is at Harms, is out for a week or two. He looks shit. Um, so, um, yeah, I think this week I, I've looked at getting Fife in uh, Massimo D'Ambrosio and uh, Blakey Howe. So they're my three. Nice. They're my ultimate boosters that are going to do well for me. So how about I'm going to handball it over to our little Skidmeister. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is not a name that we're bringing up, all right? Don't you dare. <laughs> That's only what my miso calls me. So how dare you, all right? Shout um, out to AJ. Yeah, a girl. Hope you're recovering well, sweetheart. Um, so yeah, I'm so I've gone Fisher down to Berry. That is my one that I wanted to do. I can't get coin elsewhere um as much as I don't want to get rid of fish, but I'm just gonna to have to. So that keeps me with a bit extra coin uh to be able to upgrade elsewhere. Um, a bit of love in the chat. Thanks. What have I, I, I would. Um, what have I done? Up, and I didn't realize. That's what I call that, my undies at the end of the day, Skidmeister. I didn't realize that our um, our chat was a bunch of three year olds that were <laughs> little bitches. But righto, that's yeah. all right. I guess that's who we. I guess that's who we draw in. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, we we, um, we yeah, target so a mature audience. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So bury in Fisher out, and then where I'm looking at my other ones, I'm not sure if I want to do Jackson for Heaney. Um, I'm not sure of that yet. I am going to listen to the horse. Keep Nick Martin in, I believe. Yeah. Um, Good. The only other per I I just don't know. I I want to wait because I feel like Bramble could be the the go instead of Massimo, and I don't want to wait 
waste a trade on that. So I may give it a week. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of going to, I don't know. I, I, I want to get Hogan in, but I, I don't, I know I'm not mm-hmm. going to be able to, but Tom Berry is a lock for me. Um, I'm going to think mm-hmm. about D'Ambrosio and maybe Bramble. Um, and also I'm looking at Ollie Dempsey. I feel like I'm just going to get him in and just ride the wave. For sure. Yeah. And for me, <laughs> I've got the extra, what have I got? 245K still sitting in my bank. So I will be upgrading Lions this week. Yes, I know he's got a negative break even and I will bring him in next week. So Lions is my way to Heaney this week. Mm-hmm. I'll be going Gibkiss down to Marty Hall, which will leave me about 100K. And then I've just got to work out where else. I didn't start with McKercher. That's probably my big issue. So it might be a sideways Jai Clark into McKercher because I think I'm going to miss out there otherwise. Yep, fair enough too. So you're happy to give up Lions this week, are you? Yep, to bring him in next week. So my rookies. Oh, so yeah, so it's it's Ooh, a cash two end. trades. Yep, because Heaney's just too good to pass up. That's I just fair. I can't I can't let him go, and I know Lions is going to make me. I'm confident he's going to make me 200 to 250k, which will then bring me into another primo in five to six weeks' time. Is there anything else that you like, lads would like to um, bring up before we finish this one up tonight? No, nah, no. Nah. As I said, uh, keep getting in the uh, the squeeze of the week picks if you'd like. We've got a new subsection in the Discord that you guys can just put it all into there. You got it until mm-hmm. the first bounce. Um, and, yeah, um, I like how everyone's saying, yeah. oh, just a bit of banner, just a bit of banner. We can go lower. Love that. Um, bring <laughs> it the fuck on. Absolutely love that shit. We're not here to be the most serious bunch of blokes. So yeah, good. we love that shit. Um, so around. yeah. Yeah, bring it on, but just don't hurt my feelings too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really precious. But as as you can see at home, ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing is we do like being open and transparent with the way our teams are scoring at the moment. So each week you'll see our names at the bottom of our screens along with our score and then our rank for each week. So regardless of whether we're sitting 200,000th or number one, we'll still be bringing you the same quality content as we do each week. On Sunday night, we're going to be reviewing round two, all players who did well, all players that have shit the bed, the medical room as we did last week and much, much more. But for tonight, thank you for joining us. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Us three as a triple like to call it the triple banger. Get involved. The bell will ring when we go live, so then you can jump in, have a beer with us, talk some shit with us. We love it. Uh, well, for me, I'm on night shift, so it's coffee tonight. But on Sunday night, we'll be firmly into the Denzel Washingtons. But, Herbie, anything else before we go, mate? Uh, I'm good, boys. Good sesh. Skitty? <laughs> no, nah, mate, I'm good. Kizda reckons we should uh, install a live beer counter down the bottom there, and I, um, I don't like it just because the Dale's going to be like, oh, how many did you have? Oh. Hey, huh? Skitty, do you want to address <laughs> this, mate? Oh, Skitty. So, mate, what happened last week was uh, you said Hogan 173. Another bloke actually said Hogan 171. Uh, you were close. Uh, the other bloke was closest for a bit, and then Sarong came over the top and uh, got the highest score. So you wouldn't have won anyway, but you would have been a close second. And that yes. would have got you a good old... Participation award. That's right. Yep. Try again. And try again this week. <laughs> Kizza, for the live beer counter, mate, we struggle to count from one to potato, mate. So you'll just have to keep tabs at home. But for tonight, Herbie, Skitty, and myself, the horse, thank you for joining us. And this has been another episode of the Inside AFL Show. We'll catch you Sunday. See ya. <laughs>